Hi, I'm Darren with ATS and today we're going to do some tests on rappel devices. A rappel device is used to control the speed of a person's descent down a rope. Although there are literally hundreds of types of devices out there, we're just going to take a look at the most common device used for canyoneering, rock climbing, caving, and mountaineering. The tube style. This rappel device is stinking hot. I can't believe this thing doesn't melt through the rope sometimes. Well, that's just Mount Foolacy. But it does bring up a good point. Let's hop in the G5 and fly over to the Sterling Rope Factory and test this sucker. Sounds good. I'll go get packing. Me too. Whoa, watch yourself. Here we are in beautiful Biddeford, Maine at the Sterling Rope Factory for our first test. We've hooked a high performance rental vehicle to a full strength rope which runs through our descent control device in turn connected to a dynamometer. When all safety measures are in place, we'll drive that vehicle away from that rappel device at a high speed, shooting for an excess of 30 miles per hour. While this occurs, we'll be aiming a heat measuring device at the rappel device and we will try to get an accurate temperature reading. Sounds fun? Let's see how it goes. 85 start. Okay, let's do it. That was a cool test. We maxed the car speed at 30 miles per hour and our rappel device reached a temperature of just under 190 degrees. Not hot enough to damage our rope, but certainly hot enough to burn some skin. One thing to keep in mind when watching our experiment is the ambient air temperature, which right now is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The relative humidity here is also just under 100% today. Head to the dry, hot canyons and climbs of the southwest and you'll see your equipment temperatures jumping into the mid 200s. So the question still on the table is can a hot rappel device damage a rope and if so, at what temperature? Let's find out. Here we have our dynamometer which we've preloaded to 250 pounds. Our descent control device loaded onto a 9mm 100% polyester rope which has been our test rope for most of these experiments. Since you're probably wondering what the melting points of these fibers are, let's take a quick look. The polyester that you find in a lot of static ropes will start to melt at 490 degrees Fahrenheit. The nylon that covers most climbing ropes starts to go at 460 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Kevlar that covers any good canyoneering rope on the market will start to char at 840 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll never actually melt, it'll just start charring. Back to Darren. For our blowtorch observations, the polyester rope changed in outward appearance at just over 400 degrees Fahrenheit and continued active melting thereafter. 
which coincidentally matches the manufacturer's specs. So what does all this mean for us in day-to-day -day normal use in the vertical adventure risk world? So let's try this scenario on for size. It's a hundred and it's a hundred and five degree day in the southwest desert of the United States. You have a 200 foot rope and you have a 200 foot desert dry cliff that needs to be repelled down in order for you to get back to your car. There's five of you in the group. A 200 foot rope is set, the first person repels down, halfway down is a ledge. First person stops on the ledge, transitions slightly, and then weights the harness and continues their descent. Their repel device, before they got to the ledge, reaches a temperature of, let's say, 200 degrees. When they stop at the ledge, that 200 degree repel device cooks a spot into the rope. Not really much to see with the naked eye, but nonetheless, a 200 degree repel device has cooked a spot into the rope. Next person comes down, stops at the exact same spot, continues cooking that spot in the rope, and then continues on their way. A 200 degree repel device is not an issue as long as the rope continues to cycle through it and doesn't have, doesn't have a long period of delay. But if five people, each having a repel device at 200 degrees Fahrenheit, stop in nearly the same spot, what won't surprise us to see is a core shot developing in the rope, either then or shortly sometime thereafter, which then needs to be dealt with as you would with any core shot. Well, that sounds pretty good, Darren. I think the takeaway message there is not to go cliffside when it's 105 degrees Fahrenheit out. My next question, though, for you is, how strong really are these ropes and repel devices when you put them together? I mean, given enough force, which one's going to break first, the rope or the repel device? That's a good question, Travis. Enough with the tomfoolery, though. Let's head over to the slow pole towers and find out. Tomfoolery. <laughs>